Coming up, Kitchen Theater is packed, and for good reason, Chef Edward Lee is in from 610 Magnolia. How's this sound? Country ham pretzels and a new twist on a BLT. You don't want to miss that. Plus, Tim Laird is in with a smash hit cocktail. It all starts, all the fun, right now on Secrets of Louisville Chef's Live. From Kitchen Theater at Sullivan University, this is Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live with your host, Kentucky's own Kevin Harned, and the Dean of Louisville Chefs, Dean Corbett, with your Chief Entertaining Officer, the CEO, Tim Laird. Here now, ready to reveal the secrets, Kevin Harned. Hi, everybody, and welcome to the show. I'm Kevin Harned, Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live here at Sullivan University. We have a great show for you. Edward Lee is in, and today, well, in for the Dino, it'll be our CEO, Tim Laird, not only shaking up cocktails, but filling in for Dean, who is on assignment. So without further ado, let's get to our CEO. Here's Tim Laird. We have an exciting crowd here at Kitchen Theater, and I am so excited to bring on an incredible chef. Uh, not only is he bringing culinary, culinary skills from around the world, but unbelievable, and we're glad to have him here in Louisville, Kentucky. I want to introduce to you Chef Owner from 610 Magnolia, Chef Edward Lee. <laughs> chef, how are you? How are you? Thanks for having me on. I'll tell you, it's exciting to have someone uh, of your caliber here in Louisville. Uh, We're excited, and uh, you Thank actually you. came from uh, New York? Originally, yes. I was born in uh, Brooklyn, of all places. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Long way from Brooklyn. <laughs> it is. <laughs> and then you uh, traveled the world, I know, and uh, perfecting I've, your culinary I've skills. I've cooked and... all over the place. Uh, I spent a little time in Europe, uh, cooked a bunch of places in New York, and I ended up here in Louisville, Kentucky. Five years running now. Wow, that's great. Now, so for five years, uh, mm -hmm. you've been over at 610. Yes. And uh, it was... Because I read the story, you uh, actually came in at the 2001 uh, Kentucky Derby, kind of fell in love with the city. Fell in love with this. No one told me that the rest of the year it's not like that. <laughs> <laughs> that's, our, that's our secret, too. Exactly. That's a getting great chefs in. That is perfect. Well, anyway, Chef, we're glad to hear you. And I know Kevin talked about uh, a pretzel and a BLT, but I know it's nothing like the pretzels and BLTs we know about. So, Chef, uh, do your magic. All right. Well, so I thought today we'd do something real simple, uh, take a really simple concept, but kind of heighten it up and do something really fabulous with it. So the first thing we're going to start with is a pretzel. And uh, this is the easiest thing in the world to do. I'm going to start with, I hope everyone has one of these at home or something like it. I'm going to start with about two and a half cups of flour. And we're just going to throw that in there. Is that just all-purpose, uh, Chef? Just all-purpose regular Great. flour. And here's a couple of secrets. Um, you're going to start with the yeast. And now this looks a little bit cloudy, but what I've done is I've put about a teaspoon of yeast. Uh, it's an active dry yeast you can get at any store in a little bit of warm water. This has been about five minutes in there, and it's activating. You can see it's gotten cloudy. So I just throw that right into my mixer like that. Then I've got uh, about uh, a sixth of a cup of brown sugar. And what I'm going to do with that is I'm going to throw it into a, about a cup of warm milk. All right, just oh, that looks great. Throw that in there. Now, the reason we do this, um, the brown sugar adds flavor, but also the yeast likes to feed off sugar. So we throw that into the mix there. And that's great because a lot of those I'll use the regular sugar, but not the brown sugar. So yeah, the brown sugar, especially with the pretzels, it's going to add a little bit of a, it's going to add a little bit of a complexity. It's going to add a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of caramel color. I like that. And um, that's pretty much it. You're going to throw that in there, and I'm going to slowly, very slowly, let that come together. So far, this looks easy. I can it's, do this, maybe. It's, it's <laughs> very easy. It's as easy. Great. It's as easy as dough. <laughs> and, um, I mean, this is how simple it is. You, we do this at the restaurant all the time. And now you have your base. I'm going to take the uh, hook attachment off. Okay. Can I hand that to you? Got it. And here is what you do. This is the fun part now. I've got some flour on my cutting board. I'm going to take the dough out. Now, 
Uh, very important point with this, um, we're making soft pretzels. These are not the hard pretzels that you find in grocery stores and bags. So with n a lot of normal doughs, you have the um, inclination to knead it and to really press it. With this dough, you don't want to. You want to just kind of handle it like a gentle, um, something gentle and, you know, <laughs> with, us, with, with you want to handle it with love. Um, because the more you press down on it, you're going to flatten out the, um, the yeast and, and the bubbles, and you want it to be nice and soft. So That's, that's where I go wrong. I overwork it, and then it becomes so elastic and yes. just, you, 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 so it's a... You want to stay gentle. A careful process. Gentle. You want to stay gentle. Gentle is the key. <laughs> gentle is the key the word here. Gentle. Um, so as you see, I'm going to roll this out. Now, do you uh, offer these at the restaurant, Chef? Yes, we do. Um, seasonally, um, but we do, and we like to flavor it with different things. So today we're going to do country ham and cheddar cheese, which, you know, wow. next time you're at home watching a game or, or, or having a movie night, and you want a little bite to eat, these are great. Or you're having company over, um, you know, you never have to go out and buy pretzels again. So this is how easy it is. I've rolled the dough out. It's about half an inch, quarter an inch. And what I'm going to do is I've got some uh, country ham here. Looks great. That's diced up. Uh, you guys can use whatever ham you want. You can use prosciutto. You can use a serrano ham. Um, I like to use local ham. That's what's great. I, I read that uh, you always like to source things locally mm -hmm. from uh, the farm to the fork, Chef calls it, and uh, uses a lot of great Kentucky Proud products. Yeah. So this is actually um, Colonel Newsom's ham, uh, which is here in Princeton, Kentucky. And um, I like a nice salty ham with this because you got a lot of dough in it, so you want to make sure that the flavor of the country ham is going to come through. And this is just uh, cheddar cheese that I've shredded. And we're going to throw that in there. Wow, that looks absolutely fabulous. Not bad, huh? So, and then you kind of, again, you want to just throw that in there. You roll it up, and you know, this is not a precise recipe. You can roll it up however you want. If you want to add more country ham, you can. If you want to add a different kind of cheese, you can. And then what I do is I kind of just keep rolling it out. Gently. That's the secret. Very gently. <laughs> Very gently. Gosh, so far, this is great. What a I mean, it's the perfect easiest thing to serve at It's home. the easiest thing in the world to do. And, you know, this recipe for this dough will make about, you know, 40 or 50 bite-sized pieces. So oh, wow. it's really cheap. Fantastic. I mean, you're not going to, uh, you're not going to break the bank on this one. Plus impress your guests. Impress Made your guests. from scratch. Made from scratch. I mean, who makes pretzels anymore from scratch? Mm -hmm. So here's this. We've got this, we've got the dough. You can add a little bit more flour. And what you're going to do is just cut it. And then let's uh, pretend that these are have risen for about two hours. Um, and here's the the secret to pretzels. You ever wonder how you get that nice brown crusty uh, thing on a pretzel? Well, what it is is it's baking uh, soda. And so what I've got here is a solution. It's about a teaspoon of baking soda for about two cups of water. Very and good. you just bring that up to a simmer. And so what I'm going to do, I've got a little bit of baking soda here. Can you? It causes, it causes it a does. cool reaction, yeah. So if, you, if you're around That's people, too, <laughs> you, can, you can impress it's people with it. The magic pretzels. Now, here's the, here's the key to a good pretzel. Um, and this is where it gets a little bit tricky. You, what you want to do is you want to dunk your pretzels in this. And it's just slightly simmering. It's not, it's not boiling. And I do them about you know, eight or nine at a time. I don't, I don't throw the whole thing in at once. And what you want to do is now you want to sit here and you want to count 20 seconds. 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, uh, up to 20 seconds. If you do it less than 20 seconds, you're not going to get that nice brown color. If you do it a little bit longer, you're going to absorb too much um, baking soda into your dough, and then it's going to taste a little metallic, so you don't really. So it's really key at this point. You really have to kind of watch. This is not the time to go have a beer or, no. or, 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 or watch TV. This is, you, you can't you wanna, leave it. You've got to watch yeah, it and you can, count. You've got to sit there and count. So I think that was about that was, that was a good. I think it was. I think so. so I'm a slow counter, but I even take it out, just kind of give it a little drip, and then you want to immediately, and you'll see the dough is just a little bit par cooked on the outside. And now here's the fun part. I've got uh, pretzel salt, uh, which is actually, people always ask me like what kind of salt yeah. it is, and, and 
it's just called pretzel salt. <laughs> <laughs> can, can you use other salts? I mean, everybody. You, there's you so many can. Great salts you can out use there. A, a coarse salt, okay. uh, like a crystal like a sea culture, salt. Uh, um, but they actually, you know, it's funny because you you buy this from the the purveyor and, and they ask what kind of salt. It's pretzel salt. Pretzel it's salt. Just <laughs> what it is. Uh, and so this is the fun part. And you know, if you're a saltaholic, you can add a lot. Uh, you can add a little bit however much you want. But a pretzel needs some salt. You just got to have the oh, yeah. flavor. Uh, it needs it, so. And the crunch and the... And, it's and part of the experience. Little, it's part little. of the... So this goes right into the oven at okay. about um, 450 degrees. You want to watch it real closely, but about um, 10 to 12 minutes should be plenty of time. And then what we should have... Got some actually Great. in the oven. Wow. And... There you go. There we go. Oh, and if you could smell this, it's just the pretzel, the dough. You know what? I've got to get yeah. it. We, we've got to have a beer with that, don't we, uh, Chef? Yes, we you, do. Now, <laughs> we, we couldn't have one while we were, uh, we were making them boil, so uh, I know that beer and pretzels are uh, a yes. good thing to go together. And I'm just going to finish it off with a little bit of melted butter. And that, that kind of puts the final stamp on it right there. Oh, and that looks great. Mm -hmm. Like you said, these are the soft, pillowy, not the real these, hard. No, these are not the hard ones. They, they've got a nice crust on the outside, but as soon as you bite into it, they're going to be nice and oh, soft on the inside. nice and easy. Very good. Well, cheers, Chef. Cheers. That looks like a great Thank you. start. Thank you very much. Oh, I forgot. The most important part of it, your mustard. Oh, you've got to have that to dunk you gotta with, You've got to have right? mustard, yes, to dunk with. And what I've done here is um, we've actually diced up some jalapeno peppers. And I'm going to throw the jalapenos oh, into it because oh, 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 oh. You know. the crowd loves that. Because yeah. that, you know, now that you're going to get the you're going to get the heat. You're going to get the um, the mustard. And so what you do is just throw a little bit in there. Plus, that's a beautiful presentation. I like yeah. the color, and the then green and the red. I like to kind of uh, throw it in there, throw it right in the middle there. And there you go. Beautiful! Wow, chef! <laughs> Fantastic! Coming up. A BLT, but it's a BLT like you've never seen before because uh, Chef Edward Lee from 610 Magnolia will be coming back with his second dish. So stay tuned. Thank you. Secrets of Little Chefs live from Kitchen Theater. We've got a great group with us. I mean, what a crowd. You all have been lucky enough to find a seat. I'm glad the fire marshal's not in here today. It's, kind of, it's packed in here, isn't it? Yes, it is. Now, you all have the great chance. Did you know making pretzels was so easy? No, he made it look really easy. Didn't he? Now, did you learn any secrets about making pretzels? How easy it is. Yeah? And the secret to making it very brown. Yeah, and that's what I, I had no idea, the baking soda did that. Go ahead and take a taste. We want to see how these uh, pretzels taste. Of course, they have the country ham and the cheddar cheese. And how is it? Yeah, this is really great. Yeah, they look delicious. They're almost like little pizza bites, but pretzels. And uh, how is it? Oh, excellent. The jalapenos are a must, too, in the mustard. Yeah, and it's a beautiful display. Well, thank you all for coming up. We appreciate it. Roxanne, Lorna, and Lori uh, in the studio audience today. We've got more. Edward Lee is here with a great BLT. He's with Tim Lair. Thank you, Kevin. What a great crowd we have today in the Kitchen Theater. And again, so uh, happy to have Chef uh, Edward Lee from 610 Magnolia. Those pretzels were dynamite. But now, I can't wait to see this BLT. So, Chef, uh, come out and tell us what you're going to do with the, 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 This is not a, bake, a BLT that I'm used to. You've got some uh, different ingredients here that look fabulous. Yes, yes. So, um, again, we like, to, we like to play around with concepts. So, um, I guess everyone here has had a BLT before, right? Someone? Yeah. <laughs> so, we're going to take that and we're going to sort of blow it up. Uh, and so we're going to have a BLT that you probably have not had before. And this is actually something we do at the restaurant, and it's a huge hit. Um, so our bacon, lettuce, and tomato, which is um, BLT. So we've got our bacon, and I've got um, nice big chunks. This is what they call slab bacon. So instead of buying those nice little slices in the store, you can buy an actual slab of bacon. And we chop it up, and we're doing a little, just sauteing it a little bit just to get a little warmed up. And I've got about a pound of bacon. And in my other pan here, I've got uh, one onion, about a medium-sized onion. And again, I'm just uh, lightly sauteing it, nothing too crazy so far. Nice little white onion. A little uh, white onion. onion. Great. Um, now, 
show you the rest of what I have. So I've got, uh, this is sherry vinegar, which is a nice flavorful uh, wine vinegar. This is sun-dried tomatoes and scallions. So again, now the tomato element is coming in, um, but instead of using a fresh tomato, we're gonna use sun-dried because it's got a lot more kick to it. Um, this is a cheese, which is an aged Gouda. I like this, it's a nice hard cheese. You can grate it, but it's also gonna melt real nicely. I've got some black pepper. I've got some Dijon mustard. And I've got the secret ingredient oh. to this uh, BLT, uh, which is foie gras. And, uh, Incredible. Oh. Foie gras. Yeah, I know. So I figured as long as we're doing a <laughs> rich dish, we now may this, as well yeah, make this it This is richer. taking it to another this level. You're right. You did blow level. this up. This is so <laughs> foie gras, and people always ask, well, where's the lettuce in your BLT? And so foie gras is actually uh, the uh, liver of a duck. Uh, and so actually the L in our BLT stands for liver. And, and oh! Right. I was uh, waiting. Chef, I was looking around. Okay, where's the lettuce? lettuce? There's no lettuce. So the liver instead of lettuce. but. Yeah. Uh, and no, so, I, but I, I, foie gras is great, and you can still buy it at a lot of the specialty stores. Oh too, yeah, you can find, find it. it anywhere, anywhere. And so, got that. And all this into. Uh, and this all goes into a food processor. Okay. Um, now this is a, a sort of an industry industrial food processor, but you know any one of the KitchenAid or any of the other um, food processors that you have at home works just fine. Okay. So all we do is we're going to take all those ingredients, the sun-dried tomatoes and scallions. Um, I'm going to save the cheese for later. I've got some black pepper. Just cracked black just pepper? Just regular excellent. cracked black pepper. Uh, for this recipe, it's about a teaspoon. Um, I'm going to do about a quarter cup of Dijon mustard. That's going to add a nice vinegary kick to it. And the foie gras, and this is, you know, foie gras is really hard to cook in a pan, and if you do it, so this is recipe, it's easy because you just throw oh, it throw in there. Throw it in. Oh, and there's like, nothing to there's it. There's the secret. I, and yes, go ahead. Do you know in Chicago they uh, they actually were banning foie gras? At one they point. they banned it for a while and then um, they uh, lifted the ban. They should. That was it ridiculous. Was, it was a ridiculous. If I lived thing. there, I would have moved. Okay. Down to Louisville. <laughs> yeah, down to Louisville. Okay. So all we do is turn it on. Now here's a little secret. So I wait. I do the vinegar last because what I want to do, I want to put just enough vinegar to kind of make everything into a paste. I don't want to put too much, too little. So I kind of just see how it's doing and I throw a little vinegar in there. And I'll run that again. Wow. And I got it on the first try. This is great. <laughs> <laughs> like he was surprised. <laughs> so now, when you have that, what you're gonna get is this wonderful paste. And I wanna take this out of here to really show you. Be careful of the blade. Exactly. And all the ingredients. And There's all the ingredients. So what you get is this wonderful Paste. And now, what I, you know, I, I ate a ton of BLTs when I was a kid. And what I always hated was you had those little crispy strips of bacon, and sometimes you got a bite of bacon, sometimes you only got a bite of lettuce, sometimes, you know, and it's just, this way, you're going to have a, a bite of bacon in every bite. Every bite. You can, you can smooth <laughs> it over. So, and this was mine. And every bite, too. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. That's a treat. So, and what I do is I take a nice, um, this is a cereal, nine grain bread. And I, I like to use a nice uh, crusty bread. I take a little more Dijon, just do a little spread on each side. So it's just like making oh. a sandwich, really. And then take my uh, grated aged Gouda. I'm gonna put one on each put side. On each side. Right. And then all it is is you take your bacon pate. Wow. And you spread it over there. What we do is. I like to use the pan okay. that I was um, rendering, oh, rendering the, the uh, mix. This is why it's got a little bit of bacon fat still left in there, right? <laughs> More so, bacon fat. You know, we, as long as we're making we a BLT, that. we may as well. Bring it out. I love and it. So what we do is just cook it. And you're just going to cook it long enough to toast it on either side. Toast it around oh. and keep it warm. The cheese will melt it together. It'll bind it. And um, you'll be ready. This will be like, take two minutes on either side. Just want to arrange it on a plate. You know, and with this, I really don't see any need for fancy stuff or twigs or leaves oh, or anything. Don't. It's just, I agree, it's Chef. just kind of what it is. This so. is a masterpiece, Chef. Fantastic. Oh. Wow. Coming up, we'll uh, be with Kevin Harned, and we're going to do a little cocktail and a wine pairing with everything that Chef uh, Edward Lee has prepared. So.
Come on back. And welcome back to Kitchen Theater. I am Kevin Harnett, and uh, we have just enjoyed some fantastic food from Edward Lee at 610 Magnolia. Dr. Foster is here, one of our lucky and one of our many studio audience members. Thanks for being here. Oh, I'm clearly the luckiest one. <laughs> yeah, well, you, you get to take a taste, you're right. But they all do, too, at the end of the show. Uh, listen, you know, you're lucky in the fact that you get to help kids all the time. Uh, you treat kids with diabetes, and today uh, you had a chance, and we had a chance to give some seats. You bid on those seats so to raise money for JDRF. We're glad to be able to give something away that someone like yourself could bid on. We pride ourselves in being all local, all positive. So take a taste, if you will, and see if uh, you enjoy the kind of blown up BLT, so they called it. And it smells delicious, by the way. It, and, and if uh, <laughs> I, I don't know if it's a cure, but it looks good. I mean, maybe, maybe we're well on our way. It'll make you forget about it. For sure. <laughs> well, listen, thank you, Doctor. We appreciate your thank support you. and uh, glad that you're here. You can be a member of our studio audience as well by simply logging on to secretsoflouisvillechefs.com. I have the great pleasure of standing in for the Dino today. Now, Kevin, now, welcome to the bar. Now, no one can replace Dean. He you is bet. on assignment, by the way. Right. We'll hear from him in a, a show ahead. Um, but it's my pleasure to be here. And just like Edward Lee blew up the uh, <laughs> the BLT and you know the pretzels, you're going to blow up some cocktails, I'm sure. We are, Kevin. You and, always uh, take it to the next uh, level. We, we are, and especially after Edward Lee's uh, uh, dishes. Incredible. They were just dynamite on the, on the money. So. He took it up a couple levels, so I had to do that even with our beer course. This is uh, something very special. Wow. Uh, it's uh, by the Goose Island Brewing Company out of Chicago, and it's an Imperial IPA. And when I say take it up, it's about $50 a case. So Well, that but, takes it up. Hey, for special occasions. And, that, and, and that's not the tax you're talking no, about, right? Oh, <laughs> yeah. Our friends, the uh, taxes. So it even goes up after that. But anyway, this is a nice kind of a hoppy uh, uh, beer, a lot of flavors in it. Uh, this would stand up, actually be great with the pretzel and also the uh, faux gras dish. So uh, cheers, Kevin. Let's uh, cheers. see what you think. Wow. Wow. Isn't that great? Makes me hoppy. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's put a little hop in the step. That is great. Now for the wine course, I thought, wow, uh, bacon, and he had all those other flavors, and especially the faux gras. Uh, you need a wine that's going to stand up, something uh, heavy that's going to complement that. So I've got to go to the Reds, and I went with a uh, Gala Rouge. This is a Pinot Noir from uh, uh, from France. So I thought this would be a nice wine that would be just a great accompaniment uh, with both, actually, the pretzel and uh, the uh, BLT that Chef did. So, now, let uh, me ask, is, is there a right or a wrong when choosing a red or a white or a blush or a whatever? I mean, how do you know? You know what, here's my rule. Drink what you like to drink and it's you're, you're gonna be fine. But uh, there is a rule, and, and the way I pair wines with foods is I look for complementary. If it's a light dish, I go with lighter style wines. If it's a heavy dish, or let's say heavier spiced, I go with a heavier wine that'll actually complement the meal. Uh, so that's why like a heavy Cabernet goes great with uh, a big steak that has all that fat and blue cheese and things like that. It just calms the wine down and the wine uh, calms that food down and just makes a nice pairing. So, But what's fun is go out and try to experiment. Yeah. So it can be intimidating. It though. can be, but it actually is not. Just go out and buy some wines and have fun. Great wine. I think that'll that uh, is good. That'll that's stand very good. up to everything that uh, Chef created. This one looks complicated. Cocktail time. Well, you know, he had all those uh, tools and ingredients, so I'm, I thought I'd bring the muddler out. Uh, we're going to muddle this one up. This is what I call the wild berry smash, uh, and it's a lot of fun. Fresh ingredients. You know, Chef likes to use fresh ingredients, so the uh, blackberries are coming in right now. Wow. So I've got about, this is going to make two cocktails. So if I'm going to do one, I do four fresh blackberries, four fresh raspberries, and to that, about two wedges of uh, limes. And I've quartered this up a little bit because I'm going to uh, muddle this. So put those in there. And then about a teaspoon of super fine sugar. So this has my mouth watering already. This is. I mean, all those great ingredients. And then we want to just muddle this up, which is just basically going in there and just and getting have all the essence out of the uh, limes. You get a good little workout with this, too. It's kind of fun. I have a feeling it's going to be good for my cold as well. This, oh, it's very, <laughs> very much so. 
So once that's well muddled, I then go ahead and put in about two ounces of uh, sweet and sour. Okay, so that goes in. And to that, into my shaker, a little ice. Looks complicated, but again, it's one of those dishes that you can do at home. All right, now we're going to shake this up. And I want to give this a good shake because I have all those ingredients in there. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. It'll be, I'm a professional. <laughs> you don't have to worry. I wonder why you didn't ask me to shake that thing up. And then, once I give it a good shake to get those ingredients, then I'm going to put in our ingredients, secret ingredients, about uh, one and a half ounces of Finlandia's wild berry uh, fusion. So it, it'll actually... Again, I'm doing this for two drinks. So right. Well, you did to, say you were a slow. To be, yeah. to, <laughs> just to pick up on when he said I'm a slow counter earlier. Did you notice that? That's right. That's the old bartender <laughs> trick. Count 1,001 that gives you uh, an ounce. But uh, when you count slow, you get more. <laughs> the secret. Anyway. Now, you could, a couple of things you could do at this point. You could uh, either strain all this out so you don't have all the... Uh, uh, the berries and the limes, but I think it makes a, a nice presentation uh, just as is. Uh, isn't that great? Doesn't wow, that look refreshing? Beautiful. And again, one of those things you just uh, muddle up, and you can do other berries, whatever you want, whatever's fresh, no rules, just a lot of fun. There it is, the wild okay. berry smash. smash. Cheers. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wow. Wow. What a summertime drink. I love it. That's very good. Refreshing. Indeed. And again, I, I saw you, you, like Dino, went back for a second. <laughs> well, <step>. I did. <laughs> that was great. All right. Well, listen, it was a fun day today, uh, Kevin. Great to be in here. Edward Lee, what a fantastic chef Wouldn't he was. Great. Uh, I want to thank everybody, all our sponsors, Sullivan University, uh, Kentucky Proud, uh, the Michelob Fine Family of Brands that are part of this, uh, PNC Bank, and also Takeout Taxi, uh, a great service where uh, you can actually call them up and they'll bring the restaurant to you. So thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you next time on The Secrets of Lula Chefs Live. See you then. Awesome. Secrets of Louisville Chefs Live is recorded in front of a live studio audience.